Today we're checking out smoothbore nozzles in the second video of this video series. Hi, I'm Matt Hinkle and today we're checking out smoothbore nozzles. This is the second video in our video series on nozzles and to see the first video, we're going to post a link above so that you can go back and check that one out. It's an overview of the nozzle types and you may want to have an overview before we get into the details of each nozzle. So the smoothbore nozzle is really one of the first nozzles that came out. It's still one of the most popular nozzles in the American Fire Service. Why is that? We're going to go over some of those reasons. One. It is a very simple design, very reliable, hardly any moving parts in it. Uh, you don't really have to worry about trash and debris collecting inside of the nozzle because it's basically a, a big opening that can flush out that debris. So we can take this tip off and extend the hose line if we need to. We can change to different tip sizes to get varying amounts of water. So typically this nozzle is going to operate at 50 PSI. Uh, some people like to under pressurize or over pressurize that smoothbore nozzles for a couple of reasons. One, under pressurizing the smoothbore nozzle allows you to operate the nozzle very easily. It's very easy to hold and still flow a good amount of water. Over pressurizing the nozzle allows the hose line to be a little bit tighter, which reduces its ability to kink and still gives you a good nozzle pattern and nozzle shape when you're going to flow this nozzle. So one of the big, big, big uh, discussion points that I think a lot of people do not understand is the ability for this nozzle to move air. So fog and combination nozzles versus the smoothbore nozzle. This nozzle moves very little air, less than a thousand cubic feet a minute. What does that mean? Well, it means that when I flow water through this nozzle, I'm not creating a massive amount of pressure or a pressure differential within the structure. If I were to use a 100 PSI fog or combination nozzle with the same amount of water, I could potentially on a, on a 30 degree or full fog pattern, move upwards of 6,000 cubic feet a minute of air. Uh, that can pressurize a space very quickly. So inside of a non-ventilated or under-ventilated space, you can potentially over-pressurize the space and that, that pressure has to go somewhere. And what it's going to do is come right back at you. Um, so this is why that, this nozzle has an advantage in those applications. If you were on a straight stream on a fire combination nozzle, you'll see similar results. So the second discussion point is going to be reach and penetration. The reach of this nozzle is mass times velocity. It really doesn't have much of an effect on if it's a smooth bore or a fog. Whatever pressure the water is flowing and whatever water is coming out of the nozzle, the amount is going to determine how far that water goes. But there's a unique thing here and we talk about effective nozzle reach versus just reach. Effective nozzle reach is the fact that a smooth bore nozzle can reach further then a fog or combination nozzle because it's not affected by the wind as much. It is a heavier stream. Uh, I say heavier. It is a uh, more solid type stream than the fog or combination with larger droplets of water. So it tends to carry further and land in a more concentrated area or target area rather than kind of raining down over a given distance like a fog or combination. So if you flow a fog or combination, stand off to the side of that nozzle and look at the amount of water that's flowing or landing on the ground between you and the target area. Then flow a smoothbore nozzle and look at the same thing. The water is going to land in a more concentrated area at the end of that stream with the smoothbore than with the fog in most situations. So reach is one thing, penetration is another. Penetration through this nozzle is a big difference between a fog and a smooth bore. A fog nozzle will use spinning teeth to try to chop up the water and make it smaller so that it creates more surface area and will absorb more heat. A smooth bore is opposite. Larger droplets of water, tighter pattern, uh, or almost smooth or solid core of water. What that does is it does not absorb as much heat energy as a fog or combination nozzle, but where does that heat absorption and energy take place? In a fog and combination nozzle, that absorption may take place much closer to you than the reach and penetration of the smooth bore. So essentially the smooth bore, we can bounce the stream off of walls and the ceiling and the floor, break those droplets up where we want to break it up, and we can attack the fire from a little bit uh, further distance. We can actually reach back and touch that fire a little farther with a smooth bore nozzle. So quick summary of this nozzle, operates at a low nozzle pressure, gives us a low nozzle reaction, 
Uh, so it's easy for us to hold. You can easily hold a 7 8 inch tip by yourself flowing 160 gallons a minute. And if you have good nozzle handling techniques and you understand nozzle reaction, you can move up to a 15 16 or even an inch and an eighth on a 2 inch inch hand line and hold it by yourself with proper nozzle techniques. So we're going to have another video later on in the series about nozzle reaction specifically. So make sure you come back and watch that one. So one other piece of uh, equipment that you'll see with a smoothbore nozzle is a stream shaper. So a stream shaper basically looks like a strainer, uh, and you'll see these for inch and a half, two and a half, you'll see them on deck guns and master streams, uh, but this basically creates less turbulence in the stream and makes a smoother looking stream than without the stream shaper. So in my, uh, my experience, the, the stream shaper on an inch and a half nozzle or a handline nozzle is not that big of a deal, but when you see it on a master stream or an aerial device, it really does make a big difference and provides a really tight core of water when flowing. So check that out. Uh, if you have them at your station, flow them and see what they do for you. Thank you for watching the second video in our video series on nozzles. Make sure you subscribe to our channel to see the upcoming videos. You can also see the videos and more information that we post on our website. We're going to provide a link above. And that website is www.boxalarmtraining.com. You can also go to our Facebook page and like that Facebook page. We provide a lot more information on that page uh, and post new updates and, and other training videos that we see. Um, so make sure you go there, like it. I uh, hope you check out some of the other videos and thanks for watching.